what are the best tech jobs for good work-life balance? So obviously as someone who is very much in their early career, I wanted to make this video for those of you who are just getting into tech and there's actually surprisingly not very much information out there. The best list I could find that was also reputable was from Business Insider and this was a relatively dated article. So I definitely want you guys to keep that in mind while going through this video. And personally, I didn't agree with all of the items on this list, but I figured this would be a good place to start as well as adding some of my own additions to this list of best tech jobs that have work-life balance. And Granted, this is going to look different across sectors, across companies, across roles. So it's not exactly just the job title that matters when it comes to finding that perfect sweet spot for work-life balance, but there's also gonna be other factors like do you have on-call hours or do you work remotely or do you work hybrid? Is there any flexibility in your work schedule or work environment? As well as just how busy overall your sector gets. So just starting off with a few of the jobs listed in this article. The first one I want to discuss is a solutions engineer. They rated this a 3.7 in terms of a work-life balance rating with an average salary of $92,000 per year. Again, this is going to be a dated article, so this may vary today. But based on their description, a solutions engineer is someone who works with the sales team and the product team to identify and solve customer issues. So this definitely sounds like more of a support role, but it definitely also sounds a bit more hands-on. You're probably not the one troubleshooting small issues. You're probably going to be the person who is actually actively fixing and coming up with solutions to customer problems and things that can't be fixed through a one-off ticket. Solutions engineers are definitely very important, especially if you're a SaaS company or just a B2B company that provides services or products to other companies. Your job is definitely very important, especially if you have big players or big clients that are playing hundreds of thousands or potentially millions for your contract. You definitely want to keep them happy and that means resolving any of their technical, technical issues or following up and dealing with all the concerns that may come up on a day-to-day -day basis using your product. Of course, this may mean that there may be times when where you are in between releases for your product or your software and maybe during those times clients may not have that much back and forth with you if there aren't any you know problems or issues that come up regarding your product so i can definitely see where they're getting the work-life balance from but i would also say that this is probably a role with high stress because you have some big stakeholders the sales team is relying on you the product team is relying on you as well as the development teams so there's definitely going to be very high stakes in your job but i can definitely see where there are times where there are times where you have downtime compared to other roles where the work stream kind of just steadily flows compared to yours that might spike up during every release or during every quarter or or monthly whenever your company has new releases or patches sent out to their customers the next role on this list i want to discuss is a data analyst they also gave a data analyst a work-life balance rating of a 3.7 with an average salary of about fifty-eight thousand dollars per year data analysts interpret data and analyze results using statistical models and techniques as well as provide ongoing reports so data analysts may also have some form of work that is recurring on a weekly basis like they mentioned a weekly report or some kind of weekly documentation that they pass on to the senior leadership team or other stakeholders that they might have but i'm sure there are also going to be ad hoc requests coming in from other teams and stakeholders that may ask you for some kind of summary or follow-ups on the reports that you've made or on certain data sources or things like that so i would say that it would depend on the time of the quarter there may be times during the quarter where or maybe teams are gathering all this data and all these statistics together or maybe there's a big client and they want that information on an ad hoc basis it really depends how often that is going to be for your company and for your teams so i can definitely see a data analyst as someone who has work-life balance next up is a web designer on this list they gave a web designer a rating of a 3.8 for work-life balance ratings and this one i would actually agree with because of the fact that a lot of web designers that i know specifically work freelance and not to say that company won't hire a web designer but they're probably most likely just going to hire directly a software engineer or a front-end or back-end developer but web designers are exactly what they sound like um, they design websites specifically the flow of the website as well as how the overall front end looks but i've also noticed that a lot of web designers also typically have templates once you get enough clients or build up a portfolio um, even on the side when you're working a full-time job as a web designer you probably still have some templates that you use let's say if you have a client that is in e-commerce or if you have a client that is a brick and mortar store maybe you even create portfolios for artists or photographers out there so typically there's going to be some template that you use and maybe you'll alter it depending on your client and what their needs are and what their preferences are like colors fonts uh, the flow of the website the tabs uh, the hamburger and the links at the top those kinds of things are definitely easy to change when you already have a template made and and i would find it highly unlikely that someone is going to start from scratch every single time they create a website for someone as a web designer because of the fact that templates just make life so much easier 
and at least you have a place to start where you can just edit and tinker around make it customized to each client so i can definitely see where the work-life balance comes from but of course if you're someone who has hundreds of clients versus just a handful or 10 clients then that'll look very different in terms of work-life balance but i know there are teams and companies where they kind of are like the hatching team where where teams come to them with ideas or things that they want and then they'll build out a product from scratch or from a template that they have and then pass it on to the official team to then to then take over and actually work on so i would say i probably would agree that web designers can have work-life balance in their jobs especially with the way that a lot of things can be put into a template and easily customizable okay next one on this list is a software quality assurance engineer or a qa engineer this role was also given a rating of a 3.8 with an average salary of about ninety one thousand dollars per year as a QA engineer, your job is to design and develop automated testing routines and perform manual testing to verify software is properly developed based on Business Insider's description. So as someone who doesn't have very much background in quality assurance and testing outside of taking a course in college, which I also TA'd for, but I do think that a lot of things in QA and testing can be automated, but starting out is definitely a bit time consuming, especially if engineers and developers aren't continuously creating unit tests and different tests in the beginning and while they are continuously developing. Otherwise, you end up with a completed product and, and zero test cases, zero regression tests, and all the different types of testing. And that is when it becomes a headache and it's basically just all the work piled up at the end. So it really depends on what you're software engineering life cycle is like at your company, which will tie into how much stress and work-life balance your QA engineers will have. Personally, I think that during development, tests should always be written at the same time that new features are being added. Um, a lot of companies have it that way where if you don't create test cases and they don't pass, then you can't push your code to production. But there are also other companies who do not do that. Maybe they don't test your code at all. Maybe they're somewhere in between those two. So, so I definitely think it depends on the maturity of your company's software development life cycle. And as a QA engineer, your work-life balance heavily relies on what that flow looks like. If you're brought in at the end of a project to test software, that's probably not going to be very fun. Although I also think that probably won't be very likely. If anything, you'll probably be brought in at the end of every sprint, um, maybe at the end of every few sprints, depending on how busy your teams may be, or honestly how big your QA team is, because if it's just one or two people, then obviously you probably aren't gonna be testing after every single sprint for all the teams in your company, if you have a rather large company. Some bigger companies also have their own like dedicated QA and testing teams. So that obviously would make your life a whole lot easier. But for the most part, your job is to test applications before they go into production. And if all the test scripts are written out and you're also working directly with the developers to develop those scripts, if the developers aren't developing them themselves, then you're probably golden. I think that's a really good place to be in terms of probably not working overtime or on weekends to test things. But a lot of testing is done after something goes into production, which is typically going to be in the evenings or on the weekends, especially for teams with high volume or high traffic websites. So you may find yourself working over the weekends or in the evenings when something goes into production and then just making sure that nothing is going wrong. Definitely things to consider. I would think that there is relatively good work-life balance, but there's so many times when maybe a big release goes into prod, then you may be working over the weekend to make sure that everything is gonna go smoothly. The next role on this list is a UX designer with a work-life balance rating based on Business Insider of a 3.9 and an average annual salary of $91,000 per year. Based on their description, a user experience designer improves the usability accessibility provided in the interaction between the user and the product. Definitely a very positive description. And to be very honest, I've considered going into UX design in college, but I had never been you know, a huge design person. I don't think I have an eye for like very pretty websites or very aesthetic things. And obviously not to say that UX is all about aesthetics, but I do think that is a part of it. This is definitely a really important role, especially for high volume, high traffic sites with a lot of diverse backgrounds or demographics using those sites. Sites that share content, new sites, educational sites, they're probably going to be very important in terms of usability and accessibility on those sites. For example, making sure the fonts are large enough even on mobile devices, making sure that the website is, is still usable by those who may be colorblind or hard of hearing. There should be a whole list of requirements by the ADA for all the accessibility requirements for a typical website. So definitely check that out if you guys are interested in UX design. This is actually something 
I also learned in my QA classes, which is something that a good QA and testing team should also test for, aside from the UX designer. But from what I know about UX design, you are going to be working with development teams and other stakeholders who may have a say in what a website is going to look like, what an application flow is going to be. Uh, maybe you're drawing out like the Figma designs or different diagrams or behavioral diagrams of what a typical user interaction would look like from beginning to end when someone goes onto your website and does a certain thing or takes a certain action. So you're likely going to be very involved in that whole flow of what the user experience is going to be. And a lot of that may go into UX research as well. I know that can be a specific role outside of UX design, but a lot of UX designers also have research that is kind of like inherently built into their jobs where they may do some kind of A-B testing to see, to see what gets more clicks depending on the feature that's rolled out. And obviously you'll be working with the development teams on those feature flags and making sure people see certain things. So it definitely is an iterative process where you're continuously working with stakeholders and getting feedback and seeing what works and what doesn't work. But it also depends on how many projects that you're doing. If you're only managing one application and you're working with one team, then that differs again from working with five different teams and working on all of their experience and user design things. So I would definitely say this again goes back to, to how your company manages the software development lifecycle. Okay, so I talked about a lot of jobs on this list and, and while I don't necessarily agree or disagree with any on this list because of the fact that I feel like it just matters so much what company you're working for. For example, if you're working at a startup, no matter what role you're in, you're probably going to be putting in hella hours, many, many hours a week compared to working at a big company that is already established maybe a finance company, um, you may be going a lot slower because there's also reasons to go slower as well as compliance things that stop you from pushing out code every single day or pushing out code every single week. So there's going to be a lot of different factors that play into this, not just the title of the job itself, which is something I want to point out especially, but one specific role that I haven't seen on this list is a cybersecurity analyst. And while I am definitely biased, that is the role that I'm currently working in in cybersecurity. And I do think that in terms of work-life balance, there's definitely days when I have a lot of meetings or or maybe I'm working past 7 p.m. or maybe I have to log in a little bit earlier to catch up on work from the day before. And I don't think there's any job that necessarily will have none of that ever. Um, but I do think that in terms of work-life balance, a security analyst definitely is a good option. I would probably rate it around a 3.8 or 3.9 based on also these article ratings. And by the way, their first ranked best work-life balance job is a data scientist that is ranked at a 4.2, which personally I may not agree with um, as much, but this article is pretty dated again. So maybe back then it just wasn't as, maybe work-life balance just wasn't as high and all these other, and people in all these other roles to see how well they felt about their job. Okay, I found my answer at the top of the article. Obviously, I did not read the intro, but Glassdoor actually analyzed this data and they made this list of the top jobs that have the best work-life balance based on ratings that people gave for these specific jobs based on their experience. So it does sound like there is some credibility to it, but let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these roles and whether or not you think they have work-life balance or if there's any jobs that you haven't seen on this list that you think has really good work-life balance that you would like to share with the audience. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. I have my course linked below on how to get your first job in cybersecurity, which has everything that I use personally to get my first and my second job in cybersecurity. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.